Hi, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's do a little bit of analysis here. Let's, let's pose a question that a lot of people are thinking about. I have a feeling at this point is, uh, you know, where's the snow and where is winter? When will it arrive and what is going on? So I've been thinking about this question for probably the last one to two weeks. Pretty solid, of course, though. I've been putting forecasts together a lot longer than that. But I knew it was going to be a late start to winter. And I put that in my official forecast, but it's getting late in the day, as we know at this point. So let me take you through a couple of pieces of analysis here. First up, you're looking at the visible satellite of the snowpack from today. A couple of things to note. The, the one on the, that says today, that was today. And the snowpack in Colorado, you can see the areas of white covering the mountains. There's nothing along the plains. 77% of the norm. One year ago, look at all the white, and that was after a couple of snowstorms, but nonetheless, you get the idea. By this point, we were dealing with a lot more snow across Colorado and even a lot more moisture across the plains, but snowpack was 115%. So there's quite a difference, and the problem we've been dealing with are these long stretches, these long dry streaks. We're in a 13-day dry streak, roughly, for parts of Colorado right now. We've had longer. We've had three, four, five um, dry streaks of 13, 14, 17, and 27 days. So that's been our problem. Here's what we're dealing with. We are absolutely in a La Nina right now, and it is the strongest since 2010, 2011. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So currently we're running minus 1.2 Celsius below uh, the, what would be typically a norm for the Nino Inso 3.4 region. Um, which is a, a very particular area of the South Pacific near the equator that we used to measure this. And that, on the scale, you can see is over in the strong category. And when I show you what the forecast is here, it actually takes it all the way down to minus 1.4. So we still have some room to go here. Uh, we're not quite at the bottom at this point. It is still engaging, so it is strong. And it is indeed the strongest since 2010, 2011. Let me show you what we're looking at here. When I talk about analogs, and I said in my official forecast two months ago, the most likely analog is going to be 2010, 2011. And indeed, that's where we're at. But there's one critical difference that you'll have to take away from this video as to potentially why we're at where we're at. Look at the analog. So we're at minus 1.2. You got to go all the way back to 2010, 2011 in the blue squares here to find a, a colder La Nina period in this particular sector of um, the, uh, the South Pacific near the equator. You got to go all the way back to 2010 into 2011. That was a big winter over the central and northern mountains of Colorado, if you're not aware. That's why this is so important. It was a big time winter. And so you got to go back. But the key difference is look at the lead in. I like to talk about how the transition is really critical when you deal with these ENSO cycles. And in particular, the lead-in was substantial from 2010 to 2011. There were many different periods of blue leading in with minus, you know, a half to minus one, minus one and a half for many, many cycles. And that helped to establish and get the pattern flowing. And the global perspective was already engaged. We're just seeing this happen now. When you look down, we're just seeing this kick in in the minus category. We had been running in the El Nino positive category for quite some time leading into this. So the transition has been brief. We're waiting for it to engage. And that's a huge difference between 2010 and 2011 is that we are just literally waiting for this to engage globally. And we just aren't seeing it. And when I show you the overall pattern, and we'll end on this, right uh, right now where it says 20, uh, it says 12, 20, 20, that is the current middle of the atmosphere, 500 millibar flow, versus this same time back in 2010 leading into 2011 winter. And there's a sizable difference, and it has to do with the transition that we're dealing with. Uh, that's that time frame versus this one. We're still waiting for this to engage. It was already engaged in 2010, 2011, and there were similar numbers as far as uh, the La Nina core value there of minus 1.1 versus minus 1.2. It's just look at the high pressure situation. The position is much further north, higher pressure readings just off the coast of California, which pushes the jet north and helps to bring it down into Colorado, giving us that northwest flow that we all so love. It was already in place. We're still waiting on that. We've only had small pieces of that at small time frames happen so far. 
So that's the big difference. We're waiting on this pattern to engage. It just hasn't done it fully yet. And we'll see. Things start to turn a little more active by this weekend and next week, um, but not terribly active. It will be colder. We're still waiting on this. So we'll see. We'll see at this point. That's all we can really do. Thank you for tuning in here. I do appreciate it.